Hello, I'm Nari McDiamond, and today Mining Journal's Spotlight is on US-focused explorer Polar X, which has just released a scoping study looking at combining the Zackley and Caribou Dome copper gold projects in Alaska. I'm speaking with Executive Chairman Mark Bojan, Jack, and Mark, tell me, what are the key highlights for you from this study? Well, there are a lot of iterations, I can tell you that. Um, and bear in mind, these studies are independently calculated, so independent metallurgist independent engineer running a resource model and, of course, an independently calculated resource. So, you know, the job in-house is very much just coalescing all those things together into one report. <clears throat> I should start with why we did it. It really wasn't a matter of let's go and build this today. It was more a matter of, look, we've got two good deposits here, um, both high grade, both from surface, both wide open at depth and along strike. Uh, one at Caribou Dome in copper and the other at Zackley, which is copper and gold. And the thought process was, well, look, they're 20 kilometres apart. Uh, there's road access to each. Could we join them together in one plant that will actually accommodate both of them? Uh, and would we have critical mass today, you know, something big enough to go and build if you wanted to already, um, so that any additional accretion or investment drilling to that would add straight to bottom line. So that was pretty much the idea earlier this year. Um, and to be honest with you, it was a very valuable process for us. It showed us what needs further work. It showed us where the biggest bang for buck will come from additional drilling. And it answers a lot, it answered a lot, of, lot of metallurgical questions as to whether you could actually have one facility produce um, concentrates from both these resources. Now, or would it need to be substantially different? Well, we now know that it could be the same one. And we know how we'd mine each deposit as well. So let's just launch straight into the results, if you like. And you know, when I say results, these things are interim, right? Um, there's a lot of variables. Um, the sensitivities for those variables are in the document. So if you don't agree on copper price or gold price or uh, you don't agree on recoveries, you know, the metrics are there to actually, you know, point on the map and say, well, what might it look like otherwise? Um, valuable for us too, I might say. Um, it's all about margin in these things. Uh, the reason this works was the grade. You know, there's an average across those two deposits of 2.5% copper equivalent. It starts from surface, so the mining costs are relatively low. Um, exactly, we would go underground straight away. At Caribou, we open cut first and then go underground. Given the topography, that just shows you get a better uh, return. Uh, for mining at that level. But the model is it currently assumed is about 40% operating margin, i.e. your uh, profit on top of total operating costs is about 40%. Um, so it's healthy. Um, it could be better. You can have better metals prices. You can have better recoveries. Um, importantly, it's a two and a quarter year payback on these metrics for a, a little over $100 million US plant. Um, not a big plant. It's only 600,000 tonnes per annum. But then it's only a 6.8 million um, ton resource slash would be reserve at the moment. So, you know, it, it's a matter of cutting the cloth to suit. Now, we think there's a lot more there. And of course, you may well go up to a bigger plant, faster throughput, better returns, uh, a matter of proving that. So on that existing resource of 6.8 million tonnes, uh, it's a six and a half year mine life at 600,000 tonnes a year. Um, the takeaways from that and, you know, our shopping list for step forwards are pretty significant. Uh, one of the biggest ones is extensional drilling, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But to give you a feel for it, we know that even 300,000 tonnes extra exactly could add something like you know, 43% to the uh, net present value. You know? So it's quite sensitive to adding more resources to it because you've already paid your plant and every additional ton you find with uh, these sorts of grades in it is straight the bottom line, and that matters. Um, you know, a 500,000 tonne increase in both those deposits, which is not a big volume, it's like a little over 50 metres cubed, um, would add in excess of 50 million US straight to uh, net present value. So you know, we're after more tonnes here, even though it would work already. Resource extension drilling uh, programs have already been planned. The other big takeaway here is the, the metallurgy. Um, we got what I would call interim results here, and we had to 
at times try and jump the queue in Western Australia, which has been incredibly busy. Uh, in fact, the last uh, test work we did, we actually sent sample to Vancouver in uh, Canada because it was faster than getting it done here. Um, so a local metallurgist and an expert handled that for us. But we know there's more returns to be gained in the existing metallurgical test work. You know, at the moment, um, caribou's copper is about 78% recovery and the gold exactly is about 79%. We would want to see another 10% on that. We've run the numbers, you know, another 10% on those grades would add another $30 million straight to bottom line. And importantly, it would add to existing tons and it would add to future tons too. So metallurgy and continuing that work uh, is pretty much critical at the moment because we know it would add substantially to position. So that work will be ongoing. Mark, can I ask you to explain the copper and gold prices you've used in the study? Well, bear in mind, we set those uh, those targets or um, levels early like this year. Uh, when in fact the copper and the gold price were substantially higher than they are today. In fact, they were substantially higher than the prices we've assumed. We've assumed eighteen hundred dollar gold and um, nine thousand dollar copper price per ton. Um, now at the moment it's less than that, and the sensitivities to that are in the model. We're in the uh, scoping study we've just reported. Um, but when you go back and look at the last couple of years uh, on the graphs included in there, they're actually pretty fair, pretty fair metrics to have used. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, I think, it's obviously critical, but just as critical is recoveries, to be honest with you, uh, and grades. So you've mentioned the, the next steps you want to take forward. Metallurgical work is a big part of it and more extensional drilling to, to get more bang for your buck, ideally. Um, given the seasonal nature of Alaska, what do you have planned in the coming months in terms of drilling? Well, what we now know is where the dollars are you know, in this project. We know at this point of current copper and gold prices that exactly would add more to bottom line than caribou. Now, with a move in a copper price, or an increase in the uh, recovery at Caribou, or even an improvement in the uh, grade of the concentrate we are able to produce at Caribou. That could flip the other way, but we know all that now. We know those metrics, in, and we can use it as a tool to plug it in and determine where. At the moment, um, we've drilled exactly a long strike for, for the best part of another two kilometres over the last couple of years. But we've never infilled it all the way back to that existing resource we've got. And some of those holes we've drilled outside of this are up to 50 metres thick at three grams gold from surface. There's other 25 metre hits too, a couple of hundred metres along the strike, again from surface, in similar or better grades than we're seeing exactly. So it needs infill drilling, basically, to stitch that all together. Now, I said earlier that you're not looking for big volumes to make a big difference here, uh, but... The prospect of doubling exactly is not unreasonable at all. We know it continues at depth because we've still got grade in the bottom of the holes. Uh, we know it continues along strike. So it needs the investment of the drilling to add to an economic position, basically. You know, that's the driver there. And it's similar at Caribou. Um, we know that it continues underground. In fact, the one of the deepest holes we drilled uh, last season and announced this March was 19 metres at 7% copper. Now, I said earlier, this whole model is predicated on 2.5% copper equivalent, and seven's more than 2.5. So we can keep scoring those. They can make a huge difference very quickly at those grades. Uh, we know Caribou continues along strike as well. Um, we know it's a little more complex. There's a number of lenses there, but it is there. So again, you know, that extensional drilling, knowing that it can add to bottom line, makes all the difference. You know, it's a big difference to having something that's already an economic unit and investing more in it to standing on a piece of ground where you don't have anything yet. And that is pure exploration. This is not that at all. You know, this is, this is the equivalent of having an unmined mind, mind knowing that you can, can actually extend it with a, a relative degree of clarity. So that's what we're about at the moment. So combined, it presents um, a, a pretty good starting point for all the work you've got ahead of you, Mark. Yeah, it's, it's a good outcome for us. And um, I think at the moment, hopefully, most people can 
absorb it for what it is, you know. And, and if I could leave you with one thought, bigger is better. You know, that's really where we've got to here. And uh, we think we know how to get that. Mark, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.